Hello, my name is Rachel Martin, and I will be presenting on the genomic analysis of St. Leo University bacteriophage. St. Leo University is a part of the CFAGES program. The CFAGES program was, was founded by Dr. Graham Hatful at the University of Pittsburgh and is overseen by the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. The program is a two semester long course offered to undergraduate students across the country. As a part of the program, students will collect a soil sample from a location of their choosing. From the soil sample, they will eventually isolate bacteriophage, which are bacteria-specific viruses. The image on the right depicts the flowchart of phage discovery. It begins with the isolation of bacteriophage from a soil sample. You can then go on to purify and amplify the, the bacteriophage until you have a high enough concentration, known as a titer. You can then go on to further characterize the phage's morphology or further characterize the phage's DNA. Eventually, the DNA will be sent off for genome sequencing. All of the bacteriophage that the students discover are novel, so the students get to name them. They are also credited as the phage's founder and will remain as the founder even after they graduate. As seen here on the phage's DB, um, we're looking at the phage Kaijon, who was discovered by a student at St. Leo, Kaijon Showers. St. Leo has been working with the C phages program for three years. In that time, we have isolated 28 novel bacteriophage, and we have contributed to the genomic annotation of seven. As you can see, all of which belong to E-type clusters. We use a variety of bioinformatic tools and programs to determine the function of phage genes. This is an example of a FAMRATOR map, which is derived from the bioinformatic tool FAMRATOR. The colored boxes above and below the rulers are the phage's genes, and then the colored areas between two rulers indicate areas of homology, or areas where the DNA sequences of two genomes are similar to each other. As you can see by comparing catastrophic and store, the areas of purple are very high levels of similarity. The areas of orange, green, and blue are areas of lesser similarity, and the areas of white indicate little to no similarity. All of these phage are phage that have been discovered on the St. Leo campus. This is a continuation of the previous fan lab. As you can see, there is great diversity among the various phage in the genome length. You can also see towards the top, some of the genes are white. These white genes are known as ORFAM genes, and these are genes that have never been seen before in phage or other viruses. They have no known function, and it will be interesting to see in the future what functions they could possibly have. So this is a fan map showcasing a singular phage genome. The top is a draft, which serves as a template for the gene layout of a phage before the functions are confirmed using other various bioinformatic tools and programs. The one on the bottom is the fully annotated version, and as you can see, now some of the genes have functions above the, the colored boxes. As indicated by the green arrow, the gene's location and color have changed between the draft and the final annotated version, and this is known as a gene slippage zone. So this fan map shows the different annotated phage that St. Leo has either helped annotate or isolated. All of these phage are from different clusters and subclusters, and as you can see, there is very little to no homology between the different genomes, and this really highlights the diversity among different clusters. As you can see, the lack of homology continues throughout the end of the genome, as well as um, highlighting the different genome sizes uh, within phage of different clusters. The cluster St. Leo has isolated phage for is the EB cluster. The two phage that St. Leo isolated is Stuer and Catastrophic. When comparing the genomes, you can see that there are high levels of similarity towards the beginning of the genome and small fragments of dissimilarity scattered throughout the rest of the genome. However, for the most part, they are very highly conserved. And the areas of dissimilarity continue towards the end of the genome as well. However, this really highlights the diversity of members among the same cluster as well as two phage that were isolated in the same area, geographic area being very diverse from each other. The next cluster is the EE cluster. St. Leo's EE phage is Kaijon, located at the top of the fan map. As you can see, the EE cluster is significantly shorter in genome length than other St. Leo phage, and the genome only encodes for 25 genes. However, despite the shorter genome, the homology between members of this cluster are very highly conserved. 
with very minimal areas of white and orange. Next is the EF cluster. St. Leo's EF phage is tiny miny. When you're comparing the other members of the EF cluster, for the most part, they are very highly genetically conserved. However, when you take a look at tiny miny, there is a lot less areas of purple, indicating less genetic similarity to other members of the cluster. And then this pattern continues towards the end of the genome as well, with the other EF phage uh, being very genetically similar to each other and tiny miny kind of sticking out from the rest with a lot of areas of white indicating little to no similarity to the other phage. So here we can zoom in and take a closer look at the end of tiny miny's genome. And we'll see that a lot of the genes are actually white. These white genes are known as ORFAM genes, and these are genes that have never been seen before in other phage or other viruses, and they have no known function. So these ORFAM genes uh, contribute significantly to tiny miny's genetic diversity among the other EF phage. Next we have the EA1 cluster. So St. Leo has not isolated any EA1 phage at this time, however we have contributed to the annotation of convict. So here we are comparing convict against other EA1 phage. And as you can see, the genomes are very highly conserved throughout its members. This is in stark contrast to previous clusters such as the EF cluster, in which there was a lot more genetic dissimilarity between some of the, the phage. And here's the continuation throughout the rest of the genome. And as you can see by all those um, areas of purple, there is a lot of genetic similarity between these DNA sequences. And then we have the EK1 subcluster. So the EK1 subcluster um, contains a very limited number of members, of which St. Leo has found two of them, uh, which are Wazak and Blue Rugrat. When looking at the genomic similarity, the members have fairly conserved homology among the different members, with the exception of a few uh, small fragments of dissimilarity scattered throughout the genome. However, um, all of the EK1 phage contain a very large gene located in the middle of their genome, which is conserved throughout the EK1 subcluster. And these high levels of genetic similarity continue throughout the end of the genome as well, uh, with the exception of a few small segments of dissimilarity. One of the most interesting characteristics of the EK1 subcluster is the large gene that's located in the middle of the genome. It's a very large gene, being almost 13,000 nucleotides in length, and it has no known function. However, it is completely identically conserved throughout the members of the subcluster, and it is also only found in the EK1s. The high level of homology indicates that it is important to the phage, however, it is not currently known why it is important or what the function is. The EK2 subcluster also has a very large gene located in the middle of its genome. Similarly, they, it, it has no known function and it's about 13,000 nucleotides in length, so a very large gene. This gene is also only found in the EK2 subcluster and it is also no, not known why it is important or what the function could be. So this is where things get really interesting. So both the EK1s and the EK2s have this large gene located in the middle of their genome. However, the EK1 gene and the EK2 gene are completely genetically dissimilar to each other. These are two completely different genes. It's incredible that genes of this size that have no known importance or function can be so conserved within members of their cluster. So why do we study phage? Well, in addition to learning more about viruses and their DNA, there's also practical applications, such as phage therapy. In this example, a 15-year-old girl with cystic fibrosis obtained a mycobacterium infection that was antibiotic resistant. Using a phage cocktail that contained phage discovered by the C-phages program, they were able to cure her antibiotic resistant infection and save her life. And she is now happy and healthy and this would not have been possible without the work that we're doing on bacteriophage. Thank you for listening to my talk. I would like to acknowledge the University of Pittsburgh, the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, Dr. Graham Hatful, the C Phages Program, the USF EM Facility, Dr. Claire Dennison, Dr. Ian Duffy, and jo Dr. John Duncan.